Hello and welcome to the Cyber One YouTube channel. My name is Ray and in this video we're going to look at the PCF 8574 8-bit I.O. expander. This is an I2C device uh, which I've connected to a Raspberry Pi. But before we get into looking at the program, I will be running this through my robot lab. Uh, there is support built into my robot lab. But before we actually get into the programming side of it, we need to understand how the I.O. on this works. From the computer perspective, it has two registers, a read register and a write register. The read register allows us to see the current state of the pins and the write register allows us to set the state of the pins. The important thing to take uh, note of here is with the wiring diagram, the schematic, we have a weak pull up when it's driving the output to a logic one and a strong pull down when it's driving it to zero. So there's our ground line and it's the MOSFET pulling it down. And we go through this 100 microamp current limit when it's pulling it up. That means that if we connect that pin to a button and the other side of that button or switch is connected to ground, when we drive the pin to high, we can pull it down low. And the way this then reads back through this way is into the data latch, which it can then read back through the I2C bus. So with all that in mind, if we want to read, say, the matrix of a keypad, we need to poll by switching down the rows or columns that we want to poll and then reading the resultant other ones. So we might poll, say, the, the columns and we see which row has been pressed by seeing which line is pulled down. All right, so the other thing that they've got on these is the interrupt logic. So these have a pin on them, which is labeled on the back, uh, interrupt. That's this last pin closest to the I2C connection pins. And that one goes high, logic high, when there is a change on the status. So we do a read, it actually captures the state of the pins when we do a read. If the last known read is different to what's currently on the pin, it generates an interrupt signal on that pin. We can feed that back to our controller uh, through some other input and capture when there is a change state. Okay, so the way I'm going to connect this up, this is a, a membrane keypad. It's very convenient. I've used this in other projects before, as you can see, and it just has a simple header that plugs onto a set of pins. As it turns out, these came with a set of pins pre-soldered to the board. So we just need to connect that up. And we're done. Now we can go into our Raspberry Pi or run my robot lab and we'll actually see how it reads the buttons. Okay, so over on the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to launch my terminal window CD into MRL 1.1.621 I think from memory let me look that up yep 621 and my actually my robot lab dot sh so for some reason only way i've been able to get my robot lab on this particular version to work is launching through the shell script 
It used to launch just with the Java command line, but it doesn't seem to anymore. Okay, so we now have my robot lab up and running. In this case, I'm going to go to the Python section. Now you can manually start all of these things up using the runtime. But uh, I'm not going to today, I'm going to paste, copy and paste. So let's just go through this. So this is a keypad reader program I've already pre-compiled and tested. I know this one works. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create and start a PCF8574 service using the name keypad. We're going to attach that to a Raspberry Pi and I've pre-started the Raspberry Pi up here. Now this is a section I've requested that I remove the pin mode. It's not required. I've, as a matter of course, set it to output. Um, even though we're going to be using half the pins as for reading, you know, to control the, or read when the buttons are pressed, we still set them as output. This device doesn't have an input mode as such and that's a bug in the program so we set all of our pins to logic one we could have done that by simply writing uh, a full register in one go and then we go through uh, and we will scan and change change the scan and, and read the pins so let's just execute that for a start so it's created the Raspberry Pi service, it's created a keypad, and down the bottom here I created a timer service to keep calling the key press scanning routine. So now when I push a button, it comes back with key press one. If I push five, how about I push it a bit longer? It comes back with a five. This by the way has a 100 millisecond scan time but it's got to scan four columns in one go and the way this works is the output is all the outputs are driven high on where we're reading with this 100 microamp circuit when the corresponding column is switched to low it will drag that down to ground and the circuit here will actually read that as a logic low and thereby we can tell that it's been that button has been pressed okay there is other things that we can do with this device apart from scanning a keyboard because it switches to low we can connect an led between the vcc line with a so uh, appropriate dropping resistor um, we connect the LED to the uh, IO pin and then when we set the associated pin to a logic zero it will light up the LED so we can use it to operate LEDs we can also use it to drive things like opto coupled relays so we can use this to operate relays so, uh, there are quite a number of devices out there uh, that will allow you to switch logic zero to activate the device. So it's a case of uh, having a look at the data sheets of the various devices you want to test out and seeing what's required to make them work. All right, so that'll do for this very short video. If you like these videos, don't forget to click on subscribe like the video 
ring that notification bell that way you'll know when other videos are released it also helps the channel if you'd like to support the channel further i have a patreon account you can join my vip patreons go lucky and lorenz burger i have my other patreons el morales 45 and rocket there's also a discord there are links in the description so you can catch up with me or other like-minded individuals within the discord server and we'll see you in the next video